I'm Alex from Silver Snakes. You're watching punkvideosrock.com. Hey guys, Rob here at punkvideosrock.com. I'm hanging out at The Wire with Alex of Silver Snakes. How's it going, man? Good. I'm doing good. I've, I was looking at your roster when we were just talking about it right now. Um, there's a couple members from a previous band. So how did Silver Snakes uh, end up forming? Uh, it started as a solo thing, I guess, sort of like an acoustic thing about six years ago. And kind of on the back burner, we were all doing different bands. And eventually I moved to the same area as those other guys. And um, our drummer, Daniel, I previously played with him in a band called Cathedrals. And he was playing with Horse the Band and Bleeding Kansas at the same time. And it just, he was the guy I wanted to play drums. Um, Mike, the bass player, is my best friend. And uh, he played with Dear Life. He was a, that was a band I tour managed for a while. So yeah. everything just kind of came together when I decided to take it seriously. Cool. And then right now you guys are promoting your debut album. Yeah, uh, Pictures of a Floating World came out in August. And uh, right now we're just, you know, really trying to get out there and tour as much as possible. This is our third tour since it came out. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, like I said, it just came out in August. So we've been pretty busy just trying to push it. Okay, tell me a little bit about the record, what it's about, what was the writing process, what was the style on the record? Um, it's a pretty straightforward rock record. I mean, I don't want to call it like an alt-rock record, but that's yeah. definitely what it's inspired by more than anything else. Um, you could probably hear the collective influences from playing in hardcore bands for the last five or six years come through, but um, the songs pretty much, are, a lot of them just developed over years. There were things that I had. And uh, we just started jamming on them with the full band and it all just sort of fell into place. The record itself, I wouldn't call it like a concept album or anything, but it, it definitely deals with a lot of like social themes and mm -hmm. stuff like that, like thinking for yourself. And I mean, in keeping it short, it's pretty much a record about just, you know, listening to yourself, going with your own instincts. Yeah. yeah. And uh, making or recording this record, you actually have, you know, some pretty big names as far as producers go. Uh, let us know about that. And how was it? How was recording with them? Yeah, uh, it was engineered by Roger Camaro, who played in No Motive, mm -hmm. which is a, an awesome band. We all like grew up on bands like that on Vagrant Records. And it was produced by Steve Choi, who played in RX Bandits. And uh, he was a mutual friend. They actually both were mutual friends. And, uh, you know, we, we got to know them pretty well over the last few years. And when it came time to do this record, it was a no-brainer to have them work on it. And yeah. they really understood what we were going for. They knew that we were trying to do something a bit different from you know whatever else was going on that they've been seeing around and it was it was cool it was a really great experience working with them it was really easy going i mean our time frame was was nuts i mean we we were in between rx bandits tours with steve and yeah. rogers working on stuff doing stuff with the warriors he, he plays with the warriors and they were doing tours so we had to get this all done pretty fast but yeah it, it all you know came out good yeah definitely and, and uh well, what about as far as the single what are you guys pushing right now and tell us about the single what is it about um, I think the song that's been out there the most is called Lungs and Lanterns. It's the second song on the record. Um, I feel like that song probably encompasses everything on the record. As far as music and the ideology behind everything, it's really... That song's about growing up in different social circles and, you know, you get older and you run into friends from high school or friends, you know, someone that was my best friend in like fifth or sixth grade, you know, we're inseparable. Yeah. Meet now when we're like 25, 26 years old and we have absolutely nothing in common. We chose separate paths and I feel like that's like a common thing that a lot of people go through at this age. Yeah. You start to see, you, you start to see like what really matters to you and, you know, the different, you know, paths that people choose and no one's right or wrong, but it's just interesting to actually like look back on it and like assess where you're at. Yeah. And any plans on a music video for this song yet? Uh, we had plans to do one last year and it kind of fell through. Um, right now we haven't been talking about it, but I mean, we'd like to do one, but we'll see. We'll see what happens with it. Right now we're um, trying to get everything worked out to get a vinyl release of the album. Um, right now it's just on CD and you could get it on iTunes. But yeah, right now we're really pushing for a vinyl release. And then once that happens, I think we're going to start, you know, pushing the songs a lot more because it'll be a lot more accessible. Uh, today's day one of, of the actual tour and you guys you guys are touring to South by Southwest yeah. so uh, how did you guys prepare for that uh, we've been practicing a lot we've been playing a lot of local shows um, last night was our last practice actually which was kind of weird to practice before the, the day we started playing that's why I'm drinking tea um, yeah just trying to really work out all the kinks for everything it's been hectic trying to book this because we we jumped on the whole South by bandwagon at the last minute yeah. and by the last minute I mean like two and a half months ago oh, which yeah. in terms of South by people applying it like a year ahead so I mean we've been scrapping around trying to jump on shows and luckily we have enough friends that even though they're on tour they're putting us in contact with people 
um, we're playing tonight with uh, The Material, and Roy from The Material is a good friend of mine, and he really helped out with booking a lot of these shows on the way there. Yeah. Playing some showcases while we're there, and we're doing some shows with Aficionado on the way back, and yeah, it should be fun. And you guys are playing the whole South by Southwest lineup for, for the music scene? We are playing just a few shows there. We're, yeah. we're going to get there on Wednesday. We're playing Thursday and like Friday and Saturday, I believe. The other days we're just going to hang out and you know try to sneak into the yeah. Fiona Apple show or <laughs> to see Hot Water Music or whatever. And speaking of Fiona Apple, you you actually you listen to her before you go on stage, right? That's my thing. <laughs> That's my thing. It's either Fiona Apple or some really obscure like Portuguese music <laughs> that uh, I just kind of warm up to. People think it's kind of weird. And what's your reasoning for that? I have a thing for female vocalist. That's like my biggest influence as far as singing goes. Yeah, yeah it's female vocalist. I just find it interesting. They, Fiona Apple. I haven't. I don't think I've heard that name in such a she's such some time. My dream girl. <laughs> she's my vegan princess. Yeah, she's a she's a favorite. Yeah. <laughs> and speaking of vegan, you're actually you're actually really involved with the vegan community. Mm -hmm. um, you're working on a project as well. Oh no, we actually, um, we just do our best to promote this organization called the Beagle Freedom Project. Mm -hmm. They actually, uh, what they do is they take beagles that are tested on in laboratories all over the world mm -hmm. and they make sure that they find homes before just being euthanized at the end of it. Um, just like typical things, household, pro household products, um, you know, cosmetics, uh, cigarettes, everything gets tested on beagles. They're, they're the dog that gets tested on the most and they assure that those dogs don't get put down after all this. I mean, it would be great if they could just bust into these labs and just get them all while they're there. But, you know, in the spirit of doing it legally and, you know, reaching a bigger audience, more mainstream attention at least, uh, they have to go about it that way. And they've been doing great things. They rescued like 70 beagles from a Spanish lab recently, wow. found them all home. So we just do our best to, you know, hype them up whenever we can. Friends are starting to jump on that as well. Our friend Adam from Law Dispute just did a just did a print as well that he just designed that all the proceeds go to Beagle Freedom Project. We just did a limited silk screen poster for them as well that we have on this tour only. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we're just going to be donating to them as much as we can. Now, if your fans want to go ahead and help out, how? what are the ways of, of helping? What can they do with the band and even outside of the band? Um, as far as that goes, I mean, I would just check it out. Check out BeagleFreedomProject.org and uh, just get involved with that stuff. Just just read about it. All I, re I, I won't push beliefs on anybody, like especially from that, that, uh, that side of the band because I'm the only vegan one in the band. Yeah. I'm not trying to represent everyone in the band, but as far as that goes, I just want people to question everything. Like I said with the record, thinking for yourself, like that's my part of it. When it comes to veganism, that's me thinking for myself. And you know, I question everything. I won't take things as face value. I, I'll just, uh, no matter what it is. So I'm just encouraging as many people as I can to do that. Yeah. And then what, what else do you have planned for Silver Snakes for the, for the remainder of the year uh, right now? Uh, right now, as soon as we get back from this tour, we're going to start practicing again. We're going to be working on new songs. We have a lot of demos in the works already. Um, probably recording another EP pretty soon. Mm -hmm. And then I want to get out there again by May or June, do another West Coast and just stay on tour, yeah. hoping to just hop on as many things as we can. Definitely want to keep really busy this year. That's our main objective. Yeah. And, uh, you guys have done a lot already and it, you guys have only been a band for about a year, right? For a year, yeah. Our first show is February 4th, 2011. Wow. So it was just a year. So, so You've definitely been doing great. So <laughs> We're just trying to go about it the right way. Like yeah. we've all been in so many bands where it's just like, you, you no start the band, yeah, you, you play around for a while, you record a demo, and we're just like, we started recording our album as soon as, you know, we became the band. Yeah. I started demoing everything. I have a studio, so it kind of works to our advantage in that yeah, sense. Exactly. But, yeah, we've, we've been trying to go about everything the right way. Cool. And uh, what, where can they reach you guys? What are your links? Go ahead and drop them. Uh, Yearofthesnakes.com. Um, that's pretty much it. That links to everything. That's our Facebook. We have a Tumblr. We have Twitter. Twitter and Instagram. It's silver underscore snakes. Um, you could follow us on tour. See all our crazy pictures of everything.